I was able to push in the top 5 in the entire world with 30 and 4 in the Royal Term with the best decks for the Royal Term. So stay tuned to see all of the best decks which I used to beat the best players in the entire world. If you guys don't want to miss any of this high level content in the future, make sure to subscribe and also make sure to use creator code Morton in the shop. And I would say, let's dive jump into the games and I'm going to show you how I reached this position in the entire world. The first game I want to show you guys is actually this deck. I played live around here because I was switching up a ton of decks in the top 20 in the world and top 15 in the world and he actually sniped me we faced a snipe e-giant executioner tornado tombstone um earthquake and he still he still he still didn't play well so he's going for the e-giant first in the back in the same lane and was like okay it's going to be most likely normal e-giant deck it's fine i try my best it's not a good matchup but yeah so after this whole execution i was like Bro, this is really, really unfortunate. So I need to go for high tombstone here, but I know he has most likely, yeah, he has the EQ after, like, I kind of saw, like, a stack, and I was like, okay, how oh, am I supposed to win this one? How am I supposed to win this one? So I'm using this here, and look now at my really, really great skelly i like, just trying to kill it as soon as I can. And he's like, okay, I'm just gonna let it go. I don't really care. And I guess, like, he doesn't know what to do. He's, like, really, like, okay, I need to defend this. I need to defend this, but he cannot. And we're going for a Mighty Miner High. Perfect uh, placement. The Executioner almost, almost dies. But the good thing is I can go in for High Mega Man. Hit the towers and fire for rage. <laughs> he just sniped me. And he lost. This is an absolutely crazy embarrassment. So guys, the next game I want to show you guys is this matchup. So like a ton of people will at least in the top of the leaderboard will play RG. So you want to play for sure counter. You want to play a deck which is really, really decent against Royal Giant. And our deck is pretty good against it. Since you have the, um, the Inferno Tower. And a ton of people start playing the RG Fireball version. Like with the Skelly King, the Mother. Which since there's a ton of bait. Also a deck which I got like recently number one in the world with. The Minor Control deck really sucks against Mother Witch. So... I feel like Mother Witch is just so, so good right now. So having an Inferno Tower in the deck, having a Fireball in the deck, just makes this matchup really, really good. So I'm using my Mother here in the back to split. Use this dual deck, which I also showed in one of my videos, like when I talked about the Goblin Gang specific. Just like a generally really, really good deck. And I'm using my Skaking now in the back. Um, Getting all the skeletons. Kind of fortunate the wall picket didn't connect on Tombstone, but we still did pretty well. Um, there, also when you guys see the video in the next two days, I won't be at home. I am... Um, yeah, so just let you know already and look at the skeleton. It's kind of lucky for me, so my Dark Elm survives. And also, I guess he's like not now gonna play a log. But look at my, look at my. <laughs> look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at the Dark Elm. I can also go in for my Wall Breaker here. He's using a Tombstone, but look at the Dark Elm chipping away and just getting us a 1k damage advantage, which is for sure really helpful early on. And if your opponent has a lock out, it seems pretty brain dead, brain dead right? You would just want to spam everything. Also, he plays Lock Zap, which is pretty annoying since I faced him earlier when he was using his, uh, when I was using like my minor cycle control deck without a big spell. I like my minor bait deck, and for sure, if you're like playing minor bait against Mother Witch, Zab Lock Cycle, this is not really great. So, I'm gonna use my lock here, exactly what I'm doing. And I guess right now, I'm just gonna go for my duel here, and I'm also gonna go instantly for my wall breaker. And I know he needs to lock early on, otherwise, two wall breaks are connecting. So, one wall breaker is not connect and not connect, but at least here to play lock earlier. The golems were chipping away. Kind of unfortunate since I thought like maybe the one wall breaker will also connect. Um, so his tower gets like even less HP on, but didn't really work out. It's still still fine. I'm gonna go for my skill in the back now. I guess the situation I'm just gonna relax here. Yeah, I'm also gonna fireball, which is completely fine for me. And I guess in this situation, I think like my dark Realm really really did a great job. So I'm using my um. Yeah, look at this. Look at the Dark Elm. Just Dark Elm staying alive. Also pushing the Mother Witch into the Skelly King. And just want to make sure, like, the Skelly King also kills it. It's a really, uh, really lucky sequence for us. And right now, I'm just going to go for Fireball like this, using that. And also want to make sure I'm using my Goblin in here. And stuff the Inferno. Why? Because this lock was out of cycle. So why would I go in for my Inferno if I can just get a Goblin and take one shot, still have a counter push, and still get, like, a really huge Elixir advantage as we got here. So he needs to use Zappy's height, which I'm most likely going to use my Skelly King now. Skelly King is coming down and we are looking super super strong using now my um good old 
boy here with my um, how's it called how's it even called and uh, my drill here look at the goblin gang here just want to make sure the scale king doesn't get pulled and right now i'm just going to use my build here fireballs coming on the matter which i think lock would have been also be enough but i just want to make sure it really really kills it kills it it's important the situation and right now just about like going for dark on low using my lock here and now yeah he has the zap but zap Zap against Infernal, it's always like a thing. Yeah, the reset really helps, but still, like, he still wastes two licks, and now I get even more volume with my gang here. He needs to go for the right. I'm using my Dark and uh, my Skelly King also in front. He drops a really, really high mother, which is trying to snipe my goblins, but we did a really good job here. Using now my build here. And right now, I'm just gonna also use my, um, how's it called? My uh, Goblin Drone the Tower. Using a preemptive fireball, hitting two of the Zappies, I guess. And look at the damage we're getting. Dark Goblin connects. GG's were played. If you're striking against all of the Royal Giant decks right now in Clash Royale, this is the deck you want to play. A deck which I also played before that was the Minor Control deck, which I also showed you in the recent videos. I need to tell you guys, this deck is absolutely crazy. This game is absolutely crazy. I face, I don't know if it's a snipe, but Lava, Zap, Arrows. Brother. Brother. What an absolutely amazing deck! What an absolutely amazing deck! And we have just two cards against air. Yeah, Goblin Gang and Bats, but we still make it work. Look at the pressure. He also has the guards on the ground. He has guards, minor tombstone. This is just so, so bad for us. So I'm using that here at the bridge. Since I know he could go lava in the back. And I just want to be really aggressive. He uses Zap now. And I just wanted to spend. Spend, 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 spend the elixir. And so. I guess the next play, which he's gonna do is right now, um, what like I'm gonna do is just gonna go for my wall breaker here at the bridge, and we're waiting out arrows. So this is fine. I have a really good Alexa advance. Also, his tombstone's almost dead, and I guess what I'm gonna do right now is just gonna be aggressive here, using my minor plus gang here, just like applying some aggression. He also needs, needs to use once again the guards on defense. Goblins are still gonna get a ton of chip damage, and look at the look at the goblin gang just absolutely shred the guards. Let's go. In this situation, I'm gonna be really aggressive here. He needs to use a tombstone here. And I think this was kind of the yeah the situation when I missed my lock since I didn't think he had enough elixir for the zap at this moment, but still fine. We can easily go in for uh, my wall breaker here, and he just uses the arrows there. So at least even we didn't really do the best job, we still got a plus one elixir trade on this side. So going into double elixir time for sure, we want to keep it the pressure. I don't want him to be able to go in for the lava on the back and like not being able to punish him. So I just want to spam, spam, spam that he cannot go lava on. So I'm going to go opposite lane since I thought he would go for lava on the left side, but he didn't. The good thing is in this situation, you should never use the guards. You should never use guards and skelly Ds because right now, once again, I can be aggressive and apply pressure. So I'm using my fire spirit here. And now I'm just gonna go wall breakers, I guess, and I'm going now opposite lane here. I'm just gonna go opposite lane here once again, since he also uses tombstone, so I'm using my goblin in here just to push it a bit. And he needs to also use a zap. Is he gonna use that? He's gonna use a zap, so I'm gonna go minor bats opposite lane. And now he can also, he also needs to use something else, so he's also gonna use a skelly dranks. And as you guys can see, we're keeping up the pressure using a perfect fire spell with this fire spell placement. This so flying machine just gets a one shot on top of the tower instead of like more, and our wall breakers connect. So, for sure, when I see this, I wanna go in here. My goblins are still supporting this one. I'm going for mine in the back here. I know his guards are out of cycle, so I can easily go in for my lock here, using my wall breakers on the right just to pressure him. And I guess I'm also using the ability here. Um, yes, I do. So to just kill, kill the guards. Also, my goblin gang is surviving here. He still needs to. He doesn't need to defend it, but I'm going for mine in front of that just to make sure that he's also defending that using my warbag is now on the left. And I know. Okay, we kind of won this game. He did one lava. He was waiting for his lava decision, but when he played the lava, we absolutely punished him. And I know he doesn't have Zap and Psyche, so he needs to go arrows on offense, and he can't go arrows when I pressure with my Goblin Gang, forcing out the guards that he doesn't have anything to catch the mine anymore with GG's were played. This is how you beat a Lava on Zap, Flying Machine, Fireball, Bay Deck without anything against AI and also without Fireball. Crazy Clash Royale games, and now I'm facing an E-Giant deck. You guys hate E-Giant? You guys want to know how to beat E-Giant with this dual control deck? This is how you want to do it. So, it's basically pretty easy to explain. You always want to apply opposite line pressure. You want to be really aggressive, and this is like a, dif a different dual deck than the other worlds which I recently showed on a channel, which I'm normally showing on a channel, since it's about just spamming everything you can and you want to be really aggressive you want to be really really aggressive with your goblin gangs with your skelly kings um 
and every time you like have the chance to spam you want to spam and also that's one mistake at the start of the game which you guys will see which kind of cost me a ton of damage and kind of put him in a position but you always want to go skelly king goblin and uh, goblin and the bridge goblin and the bridge for sure you can also do it with skelly army since the skelly army is pretty good at it um if you think about it since your opponent needs to respawn with it but i just feel like the goblin king applies a bit more pressure um compared to Skelly Army, but this is what I like to do. If I have a Skelly King on the map, most likely you guys will see me going Goblin Gang opposite lane. He needs to play Zap, he needs to play Lock, and also you kind of get the, um, the Goblins like into the skeleton for the Skelly King ability, so this is kind of helpful. So I guess in this situation, I'm just going to go Warbreak opposite lane since I know he doesn't have Tornado, he doesn't have Skelly, so we got to get the plus one trade. And Warbreakers in this deck is firstly to get a positive Elixir, trade, secondly for baiting out dual answers. So you don't really want to get them for black for sure if you get damage with them it's also fine it's also great but the main reason you're playing them at the bridge is just to bait out the cycle or like bait out troops like to counter the, uh, your drill so in this situation i was kind of dumb since i thought okay i don't really want to spend anything but yeah i should have done so i'm using my ability now let's see what he does against that so i knew at least we are like kind of killing that or um, almost at least they can kill with the log also but right now i guess i'm just gonna go for a duel here. i don't want to give one i give him like an e-giant opportunity and now using my um war break i know it's overspent really good skills plus bomber timing though on top of my duel so wasn't really too happy about that but still fine and i'm just gonna use my um, good old boy here high i'm also setting up a good old um skelly king opposite lane which is already really good since his dark prince just like goes into nothing and it's also one of the best drill answers so what he's gonna do right now is just gonna go this so i'm using my drill opposite lane and know it's dark sort of cycle mm. but i guess i'm not gonna oh i'm gonna go fireball here since we got like also one skeleton or something but look at the left side look at the left side and also the queen is dying so really really good a prime pressure on the right a prime pressure on the left or like just a skelly king alone plus the ability can do so much damage on the opponent's um tower so right now this is exactly what i meant i want to be aggressive i'm using this now i'm also going for my skelly king in front of that since he didn't really expect that as you guys can see he wastes his cannon and he doesn't have a lock so look at this i can also go in for my lock here really good lock timing kill everything and he needs to go for tornado he needs to go for tornado and i can just go for an inferno inferno is position of absolutely clean setup but also you can need to think about he spent so much elixir we're up on elixir inferno on the map kills the dark prince we can spam once once again and eventually we always get some trip damage duel always gets some damage i think we guys kind of know that right even if you're like playing a dark with the, the bowler it, it feels always like a dark uh, that the goblins get like really annoying chip damage so in this situation i think i messed up a bit since i should have played like my goblin gang one second later but still at least we got like some souls out of that so i'm gonna use my ability here really really fine in this situation i didn't want to overcommit with the wall breaker what i think was the right decision since yeah it would have been really really bad so he's gonna use his um lightning now so this time i think it was maybe the first like first situation where we didn't really did like the right amount of damage so i'm using my fireball now really really good fireball he still gets some damage but i know it's going to be the same as on the right side so i don't really want to overcommit there and that's all right really bad cannon placement should have played like one second later or like just playing just skeletons i didn't know if you had skeleton psych probably not otherwise he wouldn't have played the cannon i'm just gonna go war breaker right side just to bait out something um or like just to get some damage cycling and now I know he needs to defend the right side. So this is exactly what he does. And I'm just going to go for my wall breaker on the right side. I'm going to go for a log. And at this point I thought, okay, I threw. But he also played a really bad cannon. So what I'm going to do right now is just going to fireball it. Now go Skelly King low out of, out of the lightning range. So he's using a fire uh, lightning here. That's fine. And I'm just going to go uh, Dark Elm on the right. And he's doing a really huge mistake. That was a really bad E-Giant. Since I know, okay, he's going to block it as he did. But still not putting in a work and i know lightning won't be enough to chip my tower down enough so he's just gonna go lightning twice again not lighting but i know drill fireball log will do more damage so i'm gonna go for my drill i'm gonna go for my fireball also applying right line pressure for sure um go for a drill going for warbacks on the right side just want to let him like play also tornado on defense just to make sure tornado isn't getting on tower but right now for me i'm just gonna go lock i'm just gonna fireball also gonna try to get the drill spawn damage last second on tower which we get and we're winning this game with 300 hp and you guys could think this is a matchup maybe on top level on top level 
Devil on top ladder, which is pretty easy for Drill. But as a casual, I could imagine this deck is one of the harder matchups to beat with this Drill um, deck since he has a Chiba Cycle, he has the Archer Queen, which is annoying, he has a Lightning against Inferno, he has also the Bomber and the Dark Prince, so it's always about the right amount of pressure you need to do at the correct situations. If you guys don't want to miss any type of that in the future, videos like that, make sure to subscribe, make sure to use code mod in the shop, and I'm so thankful for all the support recently. I love you guys and I love creating videos, and I just hope you have an awesome rest of your day.